All right, what's going on, guys? Swag, you're back. Today, we're talking about the Detroit Pistons. If you haven't already, subscribe, man. I don't know how many people are posting Pistons videos. I'd imagine there's some out there, a few at least. I know what, uh, well, more time, no, obviously. And then I know there's a few other that I watch. So if you guys are looking for Pistons videos throughout the draft, the season, I'm a huge Kay Cunningham fan. I'm not a Pistons fan, but Kay's my favorite player in the draft. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he does in Detroit. And people don't understand as well that it's not just his basketball ability. Like, you have to remember that he embraced the culture, the city of Detroit. I'm looking at Joel Embiid, right? He's a guy, when he was drafted, he walked off. I remember, they he wasn't there in person, but they put the camera on him. He kind of walked off. But, like, K, he was ecstatic to be in Detroit. So that matters. And free agency, right? I'm looking at the Detroit Pistons. Obviously, K isn't going to be a free agency impact in, as a rookie, but... The Pistons' salary is actually really good. So, the sal the salary cap in general is expected to be a hundred and twelve point four million, which is a three million increase from last season. And the luxury tax threshold will be around one hundred thirty six point six million. The Pistons have eighty eight point two million in guaranteed salary with nine players in their contract, excluding draft picks. I'm looking at well, obviously like Dwayne Dedman was was waived and Blake Griffin was bought out. Which that that takes a twenty nine point eight million dollar hit against the cap for one year, but it's expiring anyway. So like it doesn't really matter. And then you have guys on team options such as Corey Joseph, Rodney Magruder, and Tyler Cook, and then just free agents in general. Wayne Ellington, who I made a comment and a Pistons fan was very agitated for some reason about it. Wayne Ellington, guys, in the first two three months of the season was shooting fifty percent from three. I said he had a stretch as one of the best shooters in the league. Guys, he, he was shooting 50% from three in the first couple of months. And I know this because I had him in fantasy. And I saw the stats. He was, And I looked it up anyway. In February something, he was up to 50%. So they got to bring him back. He's a veteran. Good guy in the clubhouse. He's a shooter. I mean, I'm looking at Kate Cunningham coming off of a pick and roll or a high screen. I mean, just whip it over to Wayne Ellington. I mean, you know, Kate has that just gifted pass that he makes just across court. It doesn't matter. And they're going to be doubling him. I mean, even Cade's going to see double teams, guys. He's six foot eight with a seven one wingspan playing point guard. If you have, let's say, I don't know, Colin Sexton is like back in, like, there's just no way he's going to get. I mean, maybe they put a three on him or something, but a lot of even threes won't be able to stay in front of Cade, and he'll be too like this. The length and the quickness of Cade. I mean, Cade is going to be a lot quicker than you guys think. I think the biggest thing for not just Pistons fans but NBA fans is that Cade is quicker than you guys think. It's kind of like Luka, and he looks unathletic, but then when you play against him, it's like, oh, wow, he just blew right by me. So Cade is going to be blowing by threes. He's going to be too big for ones. I don't know who's going to defend Cade, even as a rookie. And then he also can shoot off of the dribble. I mean, you can't double him because he's a gifted passer. So, But back to the free agents. I mean, Dennis Smith Jr. is restricted, $7.7 million qualifying offer. That is a little bit pricey, but I do like Dennis Smith because he's young, athletic, and he's actually a pretty good passer. So I wouldn't hate if he comes back. Obviously, there's better options out there, but I mean, yeah, seven point seven million considering how big the market is. I mean, Gary Trent Jr. might see over twenty million annually, so that's not bad. And then you have a guy as Diallo. I'd say his first name, but I'd butcher it. Himiu Himiu Diallo. Restricted 2.1 million qualifying offer. Frank Jackson restricted 1.8 million, which is a a bargain of a deal because you could debate that Frank Jackson is the best piston off of the bench. Saban Lee, who is restricted to a contract, so I mean he'll be back, obviously. So the Pistons they have salary to work with, nothing crazy, but I will say that the Pistons this season I don't think they'll be that great. I don't certainly don't think they'll be the worst team in the league, but I think they'll be right until the end of the season for that final play in tournament. But the thing about the Pistons is that their future is what we care about, right? Like, yeah, we want them to win some games and we want Cade to win rookie of the year. But the, the biggest thing for the Pistons is what can they do the next couple of years down the line? Can they get enough salary to offer a couple of free agents, possibly max contracts or at least one free agent? Because Cade in a couple of seasons is going to be at the top of the league. He might not be the best player, but he's certainly going to be one of the best players, superstars in the league. I mean, Cade is the most complete player coming to the draft. So even if you don't think he's a generational talent, you have to at least admit that he's going to be a star in this league. I mean, you, maybe you're, you want to wait, but like just off of prospects and how we ranked him, I think Cade is definitely looking like a star. So let's say I have no example that I can think of, but... Let's just say, I don't know, this is a really weird example. I guess, I guess I got one, but let's say Kevin Durant. I know this is a fairy tale, but let's say like Cade wins rookie of the year. Kevin Durant, 
this is that's a stupid example because Durant would go to a team that is ready to win now. But let's just stick with it because screw it. I mean, it's fun, right? So Kevin Durant is has a he he can opt out of his contract basically. He can leave next season if he wants. He's not restricted. He has an option or whatever it's called. So let's say next season the Pistons. Let's say this season the Pistons make the, like make the A C and Cade looks like a future superstar, and then Kevin Durant goes to the Pistons to prove that he can lead a team, and then they have KD, Cade, Hayes, Grant, and Isaiah Stewart. I mean, how fun would that team be? Whether or not you like Durant or you think it's realistic, just that that aside, man, imagine Kevin Durant and Cade Cunningham. That, that just would be incredible. That would be so fun. So that's what I'm saying about the Pistons. They've got salary, obviously. They've got young players. So obviously, if the rent did come to the Pistons, they would probably make some trades to get a win now roster. But that doesn't mean that they're going to trade away everyone. But they've got picks, obviously, and flexibility. So I think the Pistons are in prime position to land a big free agent next season. This season is going to be big, though, because I, I'd like if the Pistons were not at the bottom of the East. I, even if they finished 10th or 11th, I mean, yeah, you could have just tanked and got that top pick. But... I think for the Pistons and having Cade, they should just put him in a position to win now. Like, Luka Doncic didn't make the playoffs his first season, but then the year after he did, and he played incredible in the playoffs against the Clippers, right? That's how young Luka is. His second year was when he hit that step-back game winner in the bubble. It's just unbelievable how young Luka Doncic is. But I, I do believe that Cade is a generational talent, and I don't want to sound like a broken record here, so let's move on before, because you guys know I can ramble on about Cade. He's my favorite player. So, okay, uh, do you guys know the Detroit Free Press? I tried to subscribe, but it's not working, so I contacted support. If you guys know anyone in there, please let me know. I just cannot subscribe because I wanted to take a look and read some stuff. But All right, so let's look at one free agency prediction for every team. I'm just going to simply scroll down to the Pistons, so bear with me here, and let's see who Bleach Report thinks that they are going to sign, and I'll tell you guys my thoughts on it. And Mason Plumley gets traded. Wait a minute. Hold up. That is some big news. Mason Plumley gets traded. I actually wouldn't mind that at all. All right. Okay, so Plumley's finishing at the rim was otherworldly. He shot a career high 80% inside three feet and averaged 1.5 points per possession as a cutter, which were ranked six among 84 players to finish with at least 50 touches. He's a, yeah, he's a definitely a backup big. And you have Isaiah Stewart. So what would the trade be? Something around Phoenix 29th pick. Oh, my God. If the Pistons 29th pick for Mason Plumlee, that would be incredible. But you have to remember, the Pistons already have four picks alone in this draft. They've got some second-round picks that... Honestly, if I was the Pistons, what would I do with those second-round picks? Is the question. I might use one of them in Daniel Hollis Jr., but at the same time, I mean, he's a veteran wing that, I mean, he would be good for them. But honestly, I probably just, I, I would I would trade them for maybe at least one of them for get a player here that can help you win some games. Because, but yeah, so overall, anything else to add? Not really. We kind of broke down the latest news and I gave you guys my thoughts on the salary and Cade. So, I mean, yeah, obviously Troy Weaver said that he isn't committed to taking Cade at number one, which is fine. He's got to go through everything. and Obviously, it's going to be Cade, but yeah, another report came out that Pistons are most likely to keep the number one pick and draft Cade, so it kind of contradicts itself, but I'm going to sign here. Hope you guys have a good day. Let me know your thoughts down below on the video. As always, Swaggy signing out. Peace.